Well, this should be the last podcast in this room. And hopefully by today, I have the podcast studio completed. All I have left to do out there is the walls. And we're done. Everything is is set up. I just got to move the computers and the mic and all that out there. So if it ain't tomorrow, it'll be the next day. Uh, We will be out there. Uh, It's looking pretty good. I like it. I like it. You cannot always believe what you read in the newspapers or on the news. And that goes pretty much for everything today. Uh, There, as you know, I worked for newspapers for many, many, many years. Uh, I ran the presses. I had nothing to do with the stories. But I seen how the operation used to be. Okay, nothing used to be printed without having facts. Well, that's out the window nowadays. And it's even more so for certain newspapers. Uh, One in particular I'm talking about is the New York Post. Now, my father sent me this article. He is dead against this diet this lifestyle that I have chosen because he had a bad situation with it in the seventies. Well, not everything was known in the seventies that is known today. And there could have been a whole lot of factors involved with that. But he sent me this story, I guess, in hopes it would just convince me and about the carnivore lifestyle and I would quit, which I am not. But when you read somebody's news story, you have to turn around and investigate that person that wrote that article. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, this came out, I don't know, a couple of days ago. It's been torn apart on YouTube. And especially with anything new or the carnivore lifestyle, you're going to have people that just don't want you to do this for whatever reasons. Uh, let's, I'll use this for an example especially the doctors. If you, if you come up with a solution that, you know, every motor that runs on motor oil, okay. And you and they have come up with this and these people have disappeared. But if you come up with the same invention that runs on water or air, uh, they're going to want to shut you up. They're going to want to silence you, make you disappear. And it's it's along the same lines as that. Uh, If doctors were for the carnivore diet, well, everybody would be healthy. Everybody would get better. They wouldn't have a job. So you see where I'm going with this. Now let's take a look at this, this newspaper article. Doctors warn this trendy diet could lead to heart issues and dementia. In dementia, playing with fire. And this is written by Dr. or Dr. by Brooke Cato. Now, right off the bat, I know it's a young person because there are no 50, 60 year old people, not very many, named Brooke. They're just, it's a young people name. It's like Austin or Hunter or names like that. You know immediately when you hear their name, they're probably under 40. You just know. We'll get back to her in a minute. Let me uh, scroll through here. Oh, got to be on the right. I'll never get this down. All right, what's it say? Doctors have a beef with this trendy new diet. Of course they do. The carnivore diet, which involves consuming only animal body products such as meat, eggs, and dairy. It's taken the internet by storm, as fitness fanatics swear by the high power, no veggie lifestyle. And it goes on and on. While some people insist it has helped them shed weight and make them healthier than ever, experts. See, now, if you notice, they're not mentioning who are these experts. Who are they? Who's saying it? Uh, experts are skeptical about the true benefits of of eating this rigid diet. It's better. Now they got to show the meat. 
It's always raw meat when they show it. On the podcast, The Doctor's Kitchen. Well, that, that must be their source. Well, that makes it true, right? It's on the internet. Dr. Rupi Ajia warned strict carnivores uh, that their diet, along with the keto diet, involves, which involves a low-carb menu, could be pro-inflammatory and pro-aging. Well, see, the first thing is, that's the first thing that goes away is inflammation. And I know that for a fact because I'm doing it. They observe changes in key organs, such as the, the heart, kidneys, and the accumulation uh, you know, cells contributed to whatever that is, systematic inflammation and toxic cat. That is a lie. I mean, that is a lie. There is no hard evidence. There is no studies on this. They don't get cleared away by the immune system. Those are the cells you don't want in excess, and they can contribute to overall systematic inflation, inflammation. While other doctors have voiced concerns over an adequate nutrition as a result of meat-heavy, veggie-less diet, uh, whatever her name is, noted that the carnivorous lifestyle can also be increased the ri- Roaster. That'll be enough out of you. I'm in the middle of making a movie. Dogs. Maybe she's against it, too. I don't know. Where were we? Anyway, they're going on to use scare tactics, okay? They want to scare you because all your life you've heard, oh, eating red meat gives you gout. Eating, yeah, You're going to have a heart attack. You can't eat bacon. It's going to clog your arteries. All of which there are no long-term studies of any diet, let alone the carnivore diet, if you call it a diet. Uh, now, let's take a look at who this, who wrote this, okay? Now, this is going to open your eyes immediately. You will see. We can click on her, Brooke Cato. And I've seen another picture of her on something else. Brooke Cato, a self-proclaimed pop culture fanatic. Fanatic is a features reporter who writes about TikTok trends, influence culture, dating, and entertainment. She joined the Post in 2021 and graduated from Syracuse. She is an East Coast transplant with a Pacific Northwest root. Well, there you go. When she's not writing, she's continuing her pursuit for the perfect slice of pizza, the only time she'll break her veganism. Or being funny on the internet. Veganism. And I researched her a little more. She is a devout, hardcore vegan. Okay. Vegans are some of the most militant people I have ever met. Not saying you're all bad. But they want to force that lifestyle on you. I have a cousin. That's, that's a vegan, man. Everything that they, she talks about is vegan, vegan this, vegan that. But I'm not on here slamming those people, but for some reason they despise that. And a lot of that has to do with people that are vegans. A lot of them that are vegans are animal rights activists. They think the cow should be running free like it does in India and all animals you know, and believe me, I love animals too, but a cow, okay. What other purpose do you think a cow serves on this earth? If not just to feed us, what is, what, what would it do if we did not eat it? A pig. Can you imagine? We already have a feral pig problem in the South. Can you imagine if pigs just roam free? They would destroy everything. These and chickens. Uh, I un- I understand that a lot of these chickens are raised in environments that are less than you know moral. If you think that way, if you're an animal rights activist, but they only they're only in existence the way they are is because humans are consuming them. Back in the day, you had your own farm. 
you raised your hogs, you raised your own chickens, you grew your own vegetables, uh, you cooked with lard, animal fat. You didn't have bottles of vegetable oil with chemicals in it like you do today that is making everybody obese. One out of a hundred people were obese, and usually they were over the age of 50, which was very old, 150 years ago. So, when you read stories like this, before, if you're even considering doing the carnivore lifestyle, check out who who wrote it, and I will guarantee you, if they are not a vegan, they have ties to either the medical field or the pharmaceutical pharmaceutical field guarantee you they don't want you to do this they do not want you to do this now another way and this i also told my father this look this shouldn't be shouldn't be making such a big deal out of this because here's the facts i'm not eating any different let me show you the difference of how i'm eating i'm still eating these meats that i've always ate I've always ate these meats, pork chops, steak, hamburger meat. I ate a lot of hamburger meat. The only difference now is I'm not eating frozen pizzas. I'm not eating fattening breads. I'm not eating foods laced with dangerous amounts of uh, carbohydrates. I'm not eating sugar. Other than that, I'm eating like I've always ate. No, I'm not eating vegetables which today, the vegetables you eat, they're not the same vegetables your grandparents ate or their parents ate. They, have, they are bioengineered to a point, and they are rushed. As soon as they are harvested, they are frozen or rushed to you. They may not be fresh. Most of the time, they're not. So you're getting a very, very, very minimal amount of nutrition out of any vegetable or fruit. And I've spoken about uh, bananas and things like that. Prior to 100 years ago, we didn't have access to that. That was monkey food in the jungle, is what bananas were. Bananas are not the healthy food you think it is. It's just a big thing of sugar, is what it is. People are cramming those into their bodies every day, not knowing the damage that it's doing and it's up to you to investigate these foods there are videos hundreds of videos thousands of videos on a particular food just put it in the search it will tell you and a lot of the foods especially fruits as soon as you put it in your mouth it starts turning to sugar those are the foods you need to avoid meat does not turn to sugar now, I bought some peel, you, I like shrimp, you know, the peel and eat kind. This is an experience. Uh, but I didn't read the label. And I get home and I'm reading the label and there's all this sugar. And I mean, how could sugar and all that be in the shrimp? Well, it wasn't. It was in the cocktail sauce they give you with it, which I threw in the trash. And I made my own cocktail sauce. Horseradish itself, uh, a cocktail sauce is just ketchup, horseradish, and a little hot sauce. <clears throat> so I made my own with my sugar-free ketchup from G. Hughes, and I put a whole spoon of this horseradish in there. And I dipped my shrimp into that horseradish, and I ain't kidding you. Immediately, it was like somebody took a blowtorch and went up both nostrils. Oh, my God, my contacts almost popped out. So next time, and it was good, and I kept eating it. Boy, it was it was torturous. Horseradish can be hot, man. And then, then I added Louisiana hot sauce with it. Now, on the carnivore lifestyle, you're not supposed to eat any plant-based foods. I cheat with things like that. Uh, pepper. A lot of them won't even eat pepper because it's grown. It's a plant-based food. Come on. Pepper is not going to give me any carbs, you know. But if you want to go all out, don't have any flavor to your food, you know. I like to have flavor on mine. 
these sauces that I've shown you in the past, they have very low, very low, like one gram of carbs per serving. Serving's pretty good size. That's about all I use on my meats. Uh, so, I mean, however you do it, as long as you're losing, that's what matters. And I am losing. This last few days, I haven't really lost anything. And that's with any weight loss, you're going to go through that. You're going to go through time periods where you might even gain a pound or two. Uh, you know, it's just part of it. And you will eventually keep losing. I put on, I had to weed eat rooster's yard last night. I put on a pair of pants. First time I put on pants in a while and they fell right down. I mean, I can't believe how, and they were tight before. Uh, these were some Carhartt work pants. I could barely, I had to suck my gut in to get them buttoned. Now, now they fall down. So I'm enjoying that part of it. Okay. Next time you see me, I will be in the new podcast studio. I've got to get out there right now, get to work on that. It's almost done. Just, uh, I've got to get some software set up, get everything out there. I made, Hey, I might even do one this evening. I don't know. We'll see. Thanks for watching. Happy trails.